Good evening. Welcome, each of you. I know we are small but mighty this evening as we welcome one another to this Maundy Thursday service as we celebrate along with siblings in faith around the world and even on our very campus what is called the Last Supper, a momentous teaching from Jesus that symbolizes his commitment to be with his friends and to nourish them even after his death. That word mandi is not Monday, like the first you know, day of the week or you know, the first work day of the week for some of us, but it's, uh, it comes from the Latin word called for mandate. Jesus commands us to love one another as he has loved us. This sacred feast is open to all as we remember the story and lift up music that's tonight from the Taizé monastic community in France. Some people have gotten a chance to visit Taizé and experience this communal reality and sharing and worship and working together with people from all over the world and their special tradition of singing and chanting, some of which is in our hymnals. The songs we sing are meant to be repeated multiple times. We may sing, sing them more than you are comfortable with. But that has a purpose. We're supposed to move from beyond getting the notes right and focusing on the words to praying the music, getting past that repetition and making the music come alive and speak to our souls. The words in worship are adapted from another community, a monastic community that gathers young people from all over the world in Scotland, the Iona community engages us through poetry and wonder. You are welcome to worship and be reminded that of both the great gift offered to us and the invitation to go and serve. So let us begin our time of worship together. As if this were the only time and this the only place, And we, the only people, Jesus Christ, will meet us. As if this were the only time and this the only place, and we, the only people, let us worship God. I invite you to open your chalice praise to number 6-9, Come and Fill. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come 
Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. We invite you to turn to number 117. Nada te turbe. Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Quien a Dios tiene, nada le falta. Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Solo Dios basta. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Quien a Dios tiene, nada le falta, nada te turbe, nada te espante, solo Dios va. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Quien a Dios tiene, nada le falta. Nada te turbe, nada te espante, solo Dios basta. Good evening, church family. Good evening. As we ponder the prayer tonight, I invite you to notice the words in bold and join me in speaking them, if you wish. You found what we were doing, and you intervened. Come and do it together. Come and do it with me, you said. So thank you, God for intervening in our private lives. You promised us nothing by way of success, recognition, possessions, or reward. These things will come at the right time when you walk with me, you said. So thank, so thank you, God, God for promising us, us nothing. nothing. You gave us no responses apart from ourselves. Hands meant for caring, 
lips meant for speaking, hearts meant for loving, and the Holy Spirit to make us restless until we change. So, so thank, thank you, God, for, for the essential, essential gifts. Then, just when we think we've got it right as to where we should go and what we should do, just when we're ready to take on the world, you come like a beggar to our back door saying, this is the way, I am the way, and offering us bread and wine. So, so thank, thank you, God, God for, for coming, coming again, again and, keeping and keeping your word and showing your care for us and, for and all the people. This first scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, 14th chapter. It's one I'm sure we all are familiar with. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. I invite us now to please sit in silence and know that surely God's presence is with us. This is the table, not of the church, but of our God. It is to be made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, not because it is I who invite you, it is our Lord. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. We invite you to sing, Eat This Bread. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, 
trust in me and you will not thirst. <clears throat> Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. Eat this bread, drink this cup, Come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in me and you will not thirst. Eat this bread. Drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not so now, following Jesus' example and command, we take this bread and this wine the ordinary things of the world, which Christ will make special. And as he said a prayer before sharing, let us do so too. As we approach sharing communion with our God, let us express our gratitude for what is important to us at this time, whether that be ordinary or special. In this prayer, I shall give thanks, ending with, thank you, God, to which we all will respond, thank you, God. So I'll start. I give thanks for my church family and friends, and I give thanks for the cup and the bread. Thank you, God. Thank, Thank you, God. God. Now, if anyone else would like to say something they're thankful for, just use that same pattern. Thank you, God. For the laughter of children, thank you, God. 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 For being connected to a family that's bigger than just flesh and blood. Thank you, God. 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 Th
Thank you, God. 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 Build the next one. Okay. Gratitude. Praise. Heart lifted high. Voice is full of joyful. This you deserve. For when we were nothing, you made us something. When we had no name and no faith and no future, you called us your children. When we lost our way and turned away, you did not abandon us. When we came back, when we came back to you, your arms opened wide in welcome. Look, you prepare a table for us, offering not just bread, not just wine, but your very self. So that we may be filled, forgiven, healed, blessed, and made new again. You are worth all our pain and all our praise. So now, in gratitude, we join our voices to those of the church on earth and in heaven. Join me. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, as we come to share the richness of your table, we cannot forget the rawness of the earth. We cannot take bread and forget those who are hungry. Your world is a world, and we are stewards of its nourishment. Lord, put out prosperity at the service of the poor. We cannot take wine and forget those who are thirsty. The ground and the rootless the earth and its weary people cry out for justice. Lord, Lord, put our fullness at the service of the empty. We cannot hear your words of peace and forget the world at war, or if not at war, then preparing for it. Show us quickly, Lord, how to turn weapons into welcome signs and the lust for power into a desire for peace. We cannot celebrate the feast of your family and forget our divisions. We are one in the spirit, but not in fact. History and hurt still dismember us. 
Lord, heal your, your church, church in every, every brokenness. Amen. We continue in prayer. For us, you were born. For us, you healed, preached, taught, and showed the way to heaven. For us, you were crucified, and for us, after death, you rose again. Lord Jesus Christ, present with us now for all that you have done and all that you have promised. What have we to offer? Our hands are empty. Our hearts are sometimes full of wrong things. We are not fit to gather up the crumbs from under your table. But with you is mercy and the power to change us. So as we do in this place what you did in an upstairs room, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us your body, healing, forgiving, and making us whole. And that we may become for you your body, loving and caring in the world until your kingdom comes. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Since we are a smaller crew tonight, I'm going to invite us, as we're able to, to gather around the table up here, and we're going to serve each other from this sacred meal. Everyone is welcome. If you're uncomfortable, that's okay too. You can remain in your seat and be in prayer, but know that this table extends and includes you as we share in this sacred feast together. Please come forward as you are able, and let's gather.
before you're seated. Not an easy peace, not an insignificant peace, not a half-hearted peace, but the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ is with us now. Let's turn and share it with each other. I invite you to sing, Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom.
before I read our, our scripture tonight, our closing scripture, from Mark 14, 26 through 42, just remind you, uh, well, share a, a quick story from someone I heard, a professor at my undergrad college who was also a director of music at a Methodist church, and he passed away a few years ago, Dr. Earl Logan, as we ponder this scripture, which is what happens after the sacredness and beauty and celebration of the Last Supper, which begins some of the suffering journey of Jesus. But he said one day, speaking to our campus ministry group that was gathered, he said, for him, most important night of Holy Week is Maundy Thursday. Not just because we're given this command to love one another, but he feels like when Jesus goes that evening to the Garden of Gethsemane and begins to pray and says, and is in such anguish and says, you know, God, let this pa- cup pass from me, this cup of suffering, but then says, but, but not my will, your will. Dr. Logan said that was the real moment where Jesus wrestled with everything that was to come and the weight that was to come and the weight on his shoulders and the stress of the moment, and he made the decision to say yes to God's way of life and of love, even love that conquers death. So for him, he said, Good Friday is not a big deal for me, even though some people like to focus on the cross. He said, It's that night. He gets up late in the night, reads that scripture passage, and gets on his organ because he was a big music nerd and plays like Beethoven something or Bach something or the other, Mass or whatever. You know, that most, the most heightened point because that is the moment where Jesus decides to face the coming day and all the suffering and pain that will come. And so it's special tonight to read even these passages and to think about that decision and about the love that is shown in that moment that extends to us through this community and beyond. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And as Jesus said to them, you all will become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I'm raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this day, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See my betrayer is at hand. By the way, before we close, I know this kind of changes the mood a little bit. Because we want tonight to be celebratory, my family and I are going to go get ice cream afterwards. If you would like to join us, let's talk and continue pondering these passages together. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life into our hands Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew, and remake us. 
What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. And the people said, Amen.